Good morning, everybody, from a very, very snowy Mehelen this morning, Mehelen, Belgium. I am here today as I would like to review this book, which is called Piers Inc., and it is by the fabulous Robin Chase. She is the founder of Zipcar. Now, why am I choosing to review this today? Okay, well, first of all, um, Piers Inc. was a book that I studied pretty heavily for my master's this year around the peer-to-peer -peer economy. And it's written by the fantastically witty and um, personable Robin Chase. But in particular as well, she is very experienced because she co-founded Zipcar, which is a car sharing company. And it was founded in the last decade, I'll say, and then was sold to Avis in 2013 for half a billion dollars. So this woman knows what she's talking about. The other thing as well, uh, and I really liked this about the book, is that it is very well researched. She has a plethora of academic resources, you know, conversations that she's had with key people in the industry. She talks from the point of view of what she's discovered on Twitter, attending conferences, um, studying conferences, studying papers from conferences, etc. So it's for that reason that I really liked it. Um, also, as well, I will say that it it's written from a business person's point of view, which I really like, and it is written in a very visionary way. So what she does is she looks at how would the world be different in the future if we were to take the Peers Inc. movement and to progress towards solving issues like climate change, for example, um, or if we were to look at this from the point of view of the communications industry or the energy industry or the hospitality industry or so many, so many, so many others. So it's from that point of view that I really liked it. Now, um, the next thing, of course, to talk about is who would be interested in reading it themselves. Now, the subtitle, I'm just going to read you out the subtitle. Okay, so it says how people and platforms are reinventing the collaborative economy and reinventing capitalism. So that is what it's about. So who exactly would be interested in reading this? Well, I think, first of all, people who are interested in scale. Now, anybody who has run a business in the past, you will know that scale is possibly the biggest issue um, that businesses face. It's the biggest challenge that they face. And it's also one of the key things that people get into business for. So how do you achieve it? How do you achieve scale where the business is making money while you sleep or it can make money independent of you or where you can get to a point where other people are building it for you? And that is precisely what Peers Inc. is all about. So if you're interested in scaling and maybe you don't know how to do it or maybe you can't really get into the mindset of how to do it or you can't talk to enough people yet who have done it or you don't have the confidence to do it or you're just wondering how exactly is it done or what sort of mindset really needs to be in place before the execution plan can come behind it, this book is for you. The other key group of people who I think would be interested in reading Peers Inc. Um, are those who want to build platforms from communities and many of you who in fact are fans of this page um, are exactly those many of you many 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 of you that I've worked with over the years who are event organizers particularly with an interest in doing this this book is for you as well and it's those as I say those people who want to create something where you can gather a huge number of people together or even a critical mass a, a number a group of people together to achieve something collectively particularly with a business in mind and this book also is for you so this is what it is as i say it's called peers inc it's by robin chase now um as i hope it's becoming apparent from my facebook lives and book reviews um when I read a book, first of all, it takes me a while to do it because I keep stopping and thinking about it. And I started reading Piers Inc., I would say last May. I started reading it then. I, I remember particularly I was in Malta. I was giving a course in Malta. And in the evenings, I used to go out and sit on the beach and take a couple of pages out of Piers Inc. and read them and really think about them. And I often tweeted elements from it as well. And I used to tag Robin Chase, who used to respond to me and, and uh, give me her point of view. So I do really read books and it takes me a long time to do so because, I, as I say, I keep stopping and thinking. The other thing as well I want to point out is that I often wait and see how it impacts my own business before telling you about it. I don't just want to start giving you a book review saying you should go and read it and then I actually haven't implemented what I've learned from it. So I finished um, reading the book last October. Uh, I remember I was, and again, I had put this up on LinkedIn. I was in the Cliffs of Mortel 
and I was there for my brother-in-law's birthday and I that was the last chance that I had then to finish off the book again to stop really think about it go for a walk on that particular beach a colder one now than Malta I'll admit and uh, and really think about it there so it is now Six weeks since then, uh, just looking at the date here in front of me, it is now the 11th of December, hence the snow in the background here. And um, now I've felt that I've really had enough time to digest it and tell you about it. Um, and the other thing is, of course, why did I choose Belgium to run this Facebook Live? There's a couple of reasons for that. One is due to the context of the next point, so I won't go any further than that. Um, second of all, I had a morning here uh, before I have meetings. My next meeting is at around about 2 p.m. today, so I wanted to take out the morning where, again, I could stop over my croissants and coffee this morning and really think about what I was going to tell you about. Um, and three, it's a place that I spend a lot of time in. Uh, thankfully, I've been fortunate to be here on many occasions over the years. So I felt it gives me the right context to tell you about the book. Okay, so what are the three key things that you're going to learn about here in, in Peers Inc? Um, so I'm just trying to make sure you see it there from time to time. Right, the first thing, and this will have a striking effect on you if it's anything like me, okay? The first thing you will learn is the amount of excess capacity that you have. And you might be surprised at that. Those of you who, for example, are on this page and you're really busy, maybe you're building a business, maybe you're building a family, maybe you're doing the two together, maybe you're studying at the same time. It's currently coming up to Christmas, there's lots going on, and you think, okay, I actually don't have any time at all. Um, and I don't have any spare capacity of anything, particularly my mental space right now, Susan, so nothing that you can say can convince me otherwise. Well, I'm not going to try and convince you of anything. Um, what I'm going to try and convince you is what Robin Chase convinced me. And that is that we do actually have a lot of excess capacity around us. So whether it is our time, our interests, our contacts, our bandwidth on our computer, the data on our phone, there is actually a huge amount of excess capacity right around us. And I'm just going to give you a, a case in point, right? And this is one of the reasons, as I told you, that I'm I'm speaking to you here live from Mehel in Belgium. Okay, so I am here because I want to go to a workshop this evening that a staff member of ours is running for VectorVest Europe. Okay, so I am over here I'm going to be shortly going to Bruges. That's where I'm, I'm going to tonight, okay? So that's the purpose that I'm here. Now, I could have flown in uh, this afternoon. I could have gone to Bruges, stayed in a hotel that I found by Googling, and then I could have gone home in the morning and that would be that, okay? And I would have taken up two days in doing so and I probably would have been very productive and I would have achieved what I had set out to achieve, including tasting Belgian chocolate because it's just... Just what you have to do every time you come here. Well, in my opinion, anyway. So, um, but I didn't, okay? I didn't just do that. I didn't just do that at all. Because what I did was that, first of all, I also took the opportunity to think, okay, who else do I need to meet here in Belgium? Because as I mentioned, I've been coming here for a long time, meet a lot of people while I am here. There's a lot of opportunity in this fantastic country, okay? There really, really is. So, um, so I've done that. That's why I have a meeting this afternoon. I have another couple in the morning before I go back. And I also got here yesterday afternoon and got the chance to uh, call in on a few friends as well to see how they're getting on, see the new baby boy, etc. Okay. Now, the other thing that I can do is that I can, and I've often done this, don't have time to do it this time, but I've often checked out, for example, Eventbrite, or I have checked out meeting, uh, sorry, meetup.com to see what events are going on because I could, of course, sit here and I could watch BBC News because I can't understand any other channel that's on the TV since I don't speak Dutch. Um, or else I can get out, meet people, see what's going on and create some serendipitous opportunities. The other thing that I can do is that I can follow up on contacts that I may have here that I don't know about. So, for example, um, I've been in business now uh, over seven years. In general, my career has spanned at this stage almost 12 years. So, again, you know, I've built up quite a number of contacts. As many of you know, I'm not at all afraid to talk <laughs> to anyone, really. And um, from that point of view, my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn profile has expanded. My Facebook one has. Love Twitter, as many of you also will know. So, therefore, what I can do is check in on those and say, okay, well, what sort of serendipitous opportunities could happen if I was just to reach out um, to somebody and say, do you want to meet for a coffee while I'm here? 
And I've done that again on many occasions. I've had some great coffees and dinners and drinks and breakfasts and lunches and all sorts of things with people who, who may have moved, for example, from a different city. Uh, somebody that I meet over here quite often is a journalist who's moved from New York. And I met her through the Irish International Business Network in New York when I spoke there one night. And now she lives in Belgium and uh, particularly in Brussels. And she works for a very large company over here. So and she kept in contact with me through my newsletter. Somebody else is an event organizer that I've worked with over here when I was an MC for their event back two years ago. Um, one of the, it's a lobby organization here in Belgium. And I just kept in contact with her and meet up with her from time to time. And again, you never know what serendipitous opportunities may arise from that. So there are two examples and there's lots more in the various different countries that I travel around to. And if you don't know, right, if you think, okay, who exactly could I meet? Because I don't know anybody, let's say, I look at my Bel my LinkedIn profile, I don't know anybody in Belgium, I'm going to be in Belgium next week for business, and who could I meet while I'm there? Well, just think about, well, who have you got in common, okay, or what characteristics have you got in common? So, one superb website that I always check out before I come out here, for example, is at European Movement Ireland. So it's an organization at home in Ireland um, that is looking at the future of Europe and how our relationship with Europe is developing and how Europe as a whole is developing. It has great connections here in Brussels and often runs events here. Another one would be the Irish um, Belgium Business Association, IBBA. Yes, often check out their pages as well. Um, they hold a number of events here throughout the year and I'll often try and check in with those. So so you might say, okay, well, aren't they just events again? You see, yes, but I've thought about the characteristics that I would have in common with the people who go. So for example, in the case of European Movement Ireland, I'm fascinated by Brexit. I'm fascinated by the future of Europe. I see a huge amount of opportunity for our company in Europe in the months, years and decades ahead. So therefore, it is a particular interest of mine. When it comes to IBBA, I am an Irish person, I have an Irish business, I have an interest in doing business in Belgium, therefore, again, my characteristics align with those. So that is what I would say, is just have a look around to see what associations you could pick up with. Um, it would be impossible to mention being in Belgium and not mention the European Commission. The European Commission website has an events calendar on it that just has like a countless plethora amount, sorry, there those two words don't go together, a plethora of or countless number of events taking place around the commission and um, across every different sector, geography, regulation, asset class, um, technology, you name it. I could be entertained for months if I wanted to hear in Belgium as somebody who is an economist and a speaker and who is constantly looking for ways in which the future is evolving. So um, I could, of course, be doing that. Now, here's something else that I wanted to mention to you, and this ties right in with Piers Inc. And that is that um, I always use booking.com to book my accommodation. Secondly, I always try to, as insofar as possible, I always stay in a and b the reason I do that is I get to talk to the people who actually run the B&B &B, and therefore I often get some inside track on how the economy is performing or why, how they're particularly generating their business, their interaction with booking.com, etc. So I get this deep insight into the local area when I stay in a B&B. &B. So that's another opportunity that I use here in Belgium. And that's why I stopped staying in hotels and started moving into, into B&Bs. And I can observe what's going on around me. And particularly, I go shopping here, not clothes shopping. I'm, I don't do that very often. I have to say, that's not my greatest strength now at all. But I actually go food shopping. And I walk around the supermarkets and I watch the brands that are on the shelves and I look at the way in which people buy and I look at the technology that people are using to buy them and I look at the checkout and the process that they have there and I simply observe the way that they do things and I then that feeds into how I look at, for example, the fast-moving consumer goods, the FMCG sector when I'm speaking about that. Or when I'm going through the airport, uh, Schiphol Airport in, in Amsterdam is one of the most forward-looking airports that I've ever seen. And I see a lot of their ideas have now been implemented in Dublin Airport. So that's what I also use these trips for. And the, the other thing is, of course, that I can contextualize where I am on Facebook and on Twitter and so many others. Now, they're just a tiny selection of ideas in how I can turn um, my excess capacity here in Belgium into something that's valuable from the business point of view. And that's what Piers Inc. teaches you. It shows you, it just shows you the individual pieces of your day, of your hour, of your skill set, of your contacts, of your network, that can be very, very interesting and very useful. So that's the first thing I wanted to, to speak about is, she will teach you how to do this. Believe me, she will teach you how to think like this. Just making sure here uh, that you can all see, she will. 
Uh, there's no doubt about it. And she does, uh, she runs an exercise at the start of about chapter two. Apologies, Robin, if I haven't got that exactly right. But she has this example of where she takes you through her morning and she asks you to spot all the pieces of excess capacity. And I thought I was okay at this. Oh my God, she does it exceptionally well. And she'll just show you where there's so much more capacity in your day in your life than you might actually think. So um, that's the first thing. Now, the second thing that she will teach you, and she and this is immensely useful for business, is that she, and I'm going to quote this now, she says, diverse networked peers mean that instant access means that you can get instant access to the right mind. It's like tapping into the collective mind of the world. Now, is that a grandiose term or can she back it up? Well, like most things I'd say that she does, she can back it up and back it up very well. Um, so what I wanted to do now was just take you through um, my trip here. Okay, and I'm just going to show you how I am standing on the shoulders of so many giants in order to run this trip as efficiently as I can. So um, Robin's point is that there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people all over the world who are currently conspiring today to help you be as successful as you can. Right. Lots of people all over the world. And um, you might say, OK, that's a bit uh, that's a, that's a big term. Now, I, I've just noticed that Sinead Brady has joined. OK, and Sinead, I'm really glad that you're here because you and I had this conversation, actually, when I spoke at an event in Dublin. I'd say it's about two and a half years ago now when I pointed out the amount of people that you can have in your organization working for you um, with while well, you're still a one person business. OK, and she and I will <laughs> she and I will understand what I mean by that. Um, it's something that I've that I've I've spoken about before and uh, and she made, made this point to me how this particularly stood out to her so she made really glad that, that you're able to, to join me here this morning and also I see that Liam Marr um, my cousin is also here today as well great to see you Liam and thanks very much for joining me um, and to each one of you who are joining now um, I really want to say hello I'm going to wave to you all as I say from this snowy Belgium here um, now how is the world conspiring to help you okay let's just think about this now for a moment okay so here I am in Belgium if I wanted to do business in Belgium, right, which I do, which I did at the very beginning of this business journey, how exactly do or can I stand on the shoulders of others? Or do I book, you know, an Aer Lingus flight, land in Brussels and hope for the best? Well, Enterprise Europe Network, for example, is an organization that has 3,000 people working in it. It is funded by the European Commission and it pulls everybody together in the enterprise architecture all over Europe and basically enables that organization to let all of their members know about opportunities that are happening. So for example, in my case, my direct contact there is the Dublin um, City Leo local enterprise office. And where if you're in Belfast, so let's say you're tuning in from Belfast today, well then that would be, for example, uh, in Best Northern Ireland. Or if you're tuning in today from London, that could be the London Chamber of Commerce. If you're tuning in today from Malta, that might be Finance Malta. And the reason I know all of these names is because I've worked with Malta through Enterprise Europe Network. So today, 3,000 people funded by the European Commission are working to help me and all of you find new business opportunities right across this great continent and throughout in the world. And that's, that's Robin's point, is that, um, is that this is pulling together all the peers. And if all we need to do is really think about how exactly we can um, how how we can leverage these peers. So how is it that we can connect with other people so that we can maximize what they're offering us? Now, to give you a more, you know, simple example, um, booking.com, for example, I just mentioned how I use that. Think about all of the people, all of those hospitality providers right around the world who are conspiring today and um, to put themselves onto one easy platform that booking.com has also put together for me so that I can find really interesting hospitality vendors right around the world and the people to talk to me about that inside track. And when you think about the people who put all of those reviews there, they're all helping me to make the right decision in finding the right place. Now, another one, for example, Skyscanner. How did I know that the flight that I chose to take out to Brussels yesterday was the right one, the one that I wanted to take, the one that was going to be most suitable to my time, the one that was most suitable to the budget, and so on? Because all those people in Skyscanner are doing it for me. Uh, also, if I look at all of my news sources, so Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of you together are putting together a plethora of news stories so that when I go online in the morning, I can see exactly what I need, when I need to see it, and at the right time, and you're all keeping me up to date all at the same time. Now, the other reason that I'm here, uh, and, and this is particularly important, and I, so th this is why I really want to tell you about it. The other reason that I'm here is because I'm interviewing somebody tomorrow 
um, in a different part of Belgium for a new customer service role that has opened up in part of the business. Okay. Now, how did I find that person to interview? So did I go through a recruitment company? Was it through um, serendipitous opportunity again? Was it that just some, somebody rocked into my inbox and that from there I decided to pick up the mantle and, and uh, pursue them? Mm, no, actually none of the above. The answer is a site called Upwork. Now, some of you may be familiar with Upwork. It's one of the biggest freelancing sites in the world. So what I did was I went on to Upwork and I looked at this uh, site and I searched through the portfolio of people there who are interested in delivering customer service for me and not just for me, for anybody who wants to uh, give them work. And I looked at their language and I looked at their skills and I looked at where they lived and I looked at their availability, all of which of course is made very easy by the lovely people at Upwork. And then I had a plethora of people that I could approach uh, that I invited to tender for the job and a number of them did. And anyway, look, we'll go way past all that. But the key thing here is that through the peers, through all of those various different people with excess capacity and through the platform which Upwork put together, which allowed me to, to go in and check in on all of those people and what they were working on and how they, what they were focusing on. Um, together, I was able to find their excess capacity and just as Robin says, I was able to tap into the diverse network peers Okay, so the diversity is on Upwork of all different skills, all different people all over the world. And then it, they were all on this platform, um, which means that they were networked on this platform, which is Upwork, which gave me instant access to a pool of labor, which I'm subsequently interviewing tomorrow. And that's another way, of course, that I'm turning my, what I could just be back in Ireland and I could be back in at two o'clock and then uh, I could then be driving back to the office and then settling in, whereas instead what I'm doing is turning this trip into a higher return on investment. So that is exactly what she teaches you to do. She just teaches you to look around the world and just look at all of the shoulders that you can stand on so that you can build your own, um, you can you can specialize your own talents uh, and jump and leverage on all of these other various different resources that are right around the world and where people are actively working today to make your life easier, simpler, more efficient, faster, uh, and ult ultimately more successful, which is just brilliant when you tap into it. And again, Robin, this is what you have done for me. Now, the third thing that I picked out of this, and this is for a much fewer group of people than the other two, is that for those interested in building a platform, she does show you um, from the voice of true experience, being the co-founder of Zipcar, how the government should help. Um, she shows you how to build the platform. She shows how it should be funded. She integrates themes like blockchain, particularly blockchain. I'll be talking to you again about that in the future. Um, she talks about the growing pains. She speaks about um, a plethora of real business and social issues. She's very social conscious, I have to say. She's very, very interesting from that point of view in the, that she doesn't just look at business. She looks at, at how, how it all uh, features in together. She's a huge interest, a huge, huge, huge interest in climate change and um, and particularly how Peers Inc. can help alleviate and solve the world's biggest issue. Um, I'm also going to say hello to Margaret. I see Margaret there has joined in from Cavan. Great to see you today, Margaret. And I hope you, as a, a Peers Inc. platform yourself, by bringing together lots of people in various different networks, that this book particularly appeals to you because I think, I think you, you'd be interested uh, in reading it. So it's for all of those reasons that I think Peers Inc. is a fantastic book. Um, I, as I mentioned, I featured it heavily within my own master's. My own master's uh, thesis was on the peer-to-peer the -peer economy. Uh, I built a new strategic model for uh, bootstrapping startups in the peer-to-peer -peer economy. And I really wanted to thank, um, in another just very brief example of how Peers Inc. is working, um, I really wanted to, th to thank Robin for her own input in into this, um, but also to all of the other people who wrote papers, people who wrote books, some fantastic people like Rachel Botsman and uh, so many others, uh, Getsy as well, who wrote a huge amount about business modeling and some other fantastic books that I will be reviewing here. I want to thank all of you because, of course, uh, Academic Citations is an example of peers working together and where the platform is a paper in which to produce your insights. And then, of course, from there, you can present it at a conference and then from there, create the conversation and so on and so on. So, Robin. 
Thank you very much for showing me ways in which I can scale. Um, you have changed the way in which I look at our business. We've completely opened the business now in terms of working with collaborators, uh, working, tapping into the fluid uh, workforce, like I mentioned, with Upwork, partnering with people, using their excess capacity, looking at our capacity, ways in which we can work together. And just like you said, um, what it has done it is, is, it is, is it has led us to a new place of productivity, to a new place of innovation, um, opened up a lot more opportunity than I previously saw. So I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for writing a superb book and also for responding to my tweets, to my direct messages. I truly wish you every, every, every piece of success in the future. And uh, and to each and every single person who's tuning in today, who will be watching this this Facebook Live when it is a video on our website afterwards, who will tune into this as a blog post on our blog, thepositiveeconomist.com, or who will read about this in the newsletter. Thank you all. I wish you an absolutely, truly amazing, happy Christmas. And from a very snowy Belgium, thank you and good morning.